You should be the host here. I'm really loving it, Jeff. We're both monster people, diehard monster people, and we want them to do well. The Red 78 with Alan Quinlan and Neve Briggs. Nobody knows monster rugby better. I'd like to think I know a lot. Hello and welcome along to episode 31 of the Red 78 here on the Rugby Channel. And with me, as always, is Neve Briggs. Um, Neve, I don't know what to say after Saturday. <laughs> How were you then, feeling after it? It was it was an incredible occasion, wasn't it? Yeah, look, still obviously incredibly gutted, but uh, ridiculously proud. I watched it again yesterday to make sure that I hadn't uh, missed too much in the emotion of it all, and um, it was still the same feeling. I think incredibly proud. Obviously, um, there were definitely crucial moments that I felt that um, Munster could have won that game. Um, even without the kicks and uh, yeah, look, just um, so close, Gwynny, so, so close. Yeah, what was worse then is I went home and uh, Tottenham uh, put, <laughs> forced, uh, well, we were lucky in the end to get a draw at Liverpool, but anyway, the day got worse, but uh, anyway, Leinster won anyway, so that one Irish province in the semi-final, the favourite, so um, it wasn't all bad. Um, as always, we want you to be involved. You can always tweet us at Rugby Channel 15 or at either of our personal Twitter accounts and leave a comment or leave a comment on YouTube. Um, right, let's go, Neve. I put out a tweet yesterday. Um, the reaction was... It got a lot of traction, to be fair, quick. wasn't it? Yeah, very quick. Um, so we'll kind of um, go through them there. They're, they're, yeah, we'll just go the, through the, a few. The, the word heartbreaking is in a lot of them and uh, yeah. disappointment. The, there was a lot of tweets in relation to the front row that we'll speak about later on. So I'm not going to go into all of them because there was a lot in terms of, um, you know, the fact that we were kind of lacking in strength and depth there. But on, on a flip of that, um, Gary West, Terrace View, uh, Munster on an upward trajectory. Exciting to see homegrown talent coming through, driving competition from the debutants in Co Coventry, true to the younger players who contributed so much in the quarterfinal. All of the Jersey proud, new coaching ticket have plenty to build on. Uh, Brian Horgan was my 13-year-old's first experience of what I would describe as old monster support. Amazing. The obvious kicking during the 80 cost us that apart if we did win. And I thought this was a brilliant point. I can't see how the lads could step up again on Saturday in the semi-final against Leinster after what they gave last week. And that's, that's probably pretty valid, I think, considering that that was test-level intensity. It was. Munster would rather be uh, rather be looking at a daunting kind of proposition of playing Leinster in a semi-final next Saturday and dusting themselves down after being bruised and battered than going out. You know, people were... Oh, obviously. Yeah, few, but I'm few, just saying, a few, like... A few people made comments that, uh, oh God, well, at least Leinster won't. We don't have to lose to Leinster next Saturday, but I'd rather be in that position. And I'm sure the players would and the coaching staff as well. And, yeah. Um, look, uh, it was it was very, very physical and intense. And you know, we'll go into the stats in a few minutes about yeah. the effort level and that, but um, certainly they were bruised and battered. It's worse when you lose, though. In fact, absolutely. Um, Paul Kelly, how exciting are the young players coming through in Munster? They will learn from this defeat. You could draw some comparisons between Raj in 2000 and Ben Healy the weekend. He'll be better for the disappointment and Munster fans will be behind him. Fair point. <laughs> Fair points, really, really important. And I think it's we can't assume that he's going to, you know, that comparison, I, I I think. I think it's unfair to do that because you're lumping pressure on him to bounce back straight away, which can be a really difficult thing for him. Now, I've had loads of chats with Ben Healy. I think he's an incredible player, um, huge talent. But I also think that he's got that steeliness in him that'll make him, like, that'll help him bounce back from that kind of disappointment. Um, I just hope the lads rally around him, which I'm sure they will. Um, Mamakas front row needs to be looked at. Not a, not enough bulk compared to other big teams. Still got it by the result. Best atmosphere I've ever experienced. You were at the game. Um, was it incredible? I, I thought it was really interesting. Jerry Thornley had been on a couple of weeks previous on Off the Ball, and he'd spoken about with Joe Malloy um, how much it irks him that for an Irish game, um, there's never any atmosphere in the Aviva. And last Wednesday night before the game, he spoke about the possibility of hearing noise, even if the stadium isn't going to be full. My dad was at it. He said it was incredible. It was incredible. And um, I was up pretty high on, on the uh, 
near the media area doing some reports for for off the ball and uh Every 15 or 20 minutes, I'd be going over and back to John Duggan. And um, I was kind of standing away. There was no crowd around me in that section of the top tier to stand. And it was it was just incredible. I just couldn't not believe um, the support, the singing, the atmosphere. All the players added to that. So they were in the game and they reacted. You know, great start, seven points up. Um, then they conceded two tries and then the Keith Earls try. And, you know, running off at half time. The crowd were just, it was it was electric. And I think it was really important for Munster as a club to try and have that connection again. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about the occasion after the tweets, but it was really, it was it was just phenomenal. Um, yeah. the, the singing, uh, zombie from the Cranberries at halftime of the extra time was just amazing. And I I, I kind of got engrossed, you know, when you're working at the game, you're, you're obviously trying to, you know, watch tactical stuff and that, but, those moments when I wasn't giving updates, I was just, I kind of felt engrossed in the game and really kind of on edge. I was on edge and it brought back great memories. I, I, I was kind of visualizing when I was out in the field back in, in, in our day when we, you know, were on the kind of journey around Europe and the fans were just amazing. It, it brought back memories of that day. A lot of these younger players wouldn't have experienced that. So it was a great, um, a great Great atmosphere. It was just, it was, it was sensational, really. And but the players deserve the credit yeah. for, for making the game, making a real fist to the game against the Stars Club side. So it was, um, it was just unbelievable. Heartbreaking in the end. Yeah, completely. I definitely had my step count up watching it at home. Um, I couldn't get to it because it was working. But um, Pat Ray, um, after playing so well and to lose in such a tough way, it could be hard for the players to pick themselves up for the last few games of the season. But surely this performance can be a building block for next season. Okay, we talk about that I think one. Think we'll have them. We we just talk about that one because to pick the players up. We we'll and again, it's something that we'll address. And I think psychologically, very difficult to lose. Um, huge disappointment. Anytime I played with Monster when we went out in quarterfinals or semi-finals or even the finals, like it's you think how are we going to pick ourselves up and go back and play the league now? Um, I think it was the manner in the performance and the occasion that would give hope and give confidence that, you know, there's no doubt they're deficient in certain areas. And if they can make improvements, it can be glass half full rather than glass half empty. So psychologically bruised and battered. But the players themselves, when they peel back the emotion from it, will be very proud. And I'm sure Johan van Grand will be saying it, that to these players this week and the rest of the coaches and the senior players, um, the effort level, the performance. And I, we, I've always said it, whether I'm right or wrong, you know, you have to bring passion, pride, energy to the jersey when you put it on. Um, it's not always easy to do it every time, get the emotion right. And they stood up to the occasion, you know, to lose the 21 international players um, in their 23. Um, incredible power to the current champions and, and Munster really stepped up. Of course, there's a fear before the game. So, Bruised and battered and psychologically damaged. I think we saw Ulster a few weeks ago that the heartbreak and the disappointment in the two legs there. Different kind of scarring from that from Ulster because, you know, they had it. They had it over the two legs and they end up losing by a point. They made mistakes. And of course, Monster be psychologically kind of uh, traumatized from this. But the good thing is they've no game this week and they can process that. They'll be out and about, probably meeting people, and and people will be, you know, letting them know how proud they are of the performance. So I think that will help them get back on their feet. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that's going to be really important for them now. You know, obviously we'll speak about what's coming down the road over the next few weeks, but you kind of feel like if they can match that intensity and um, and that kind of bravery to go and play, then you know you kind of feel like they'll be there, thereabouts towards the end of that URC season. So hopefully that'll be the case. And we'll just finish up a, a couple of more tweets and that's it. Hilary Fitzgibbon, it was great to see so many families and young people in general at the match. My nephew's rugby coach organised the bus and tickets for all the junior teams. These kids will remember the buzz for a long time and will be lifelong Munster supporters and maybe future players, which is so important. Uh, Pat Ray, after playing so well, oh, I have that one, sorry. Tony, KB777, Absolutely, we can build from this for the first time in years. We have good kids with lots of potential. 
scrum as a shambles at front row in particular for years has been a week um has been weak against some good young comings through. But why don't we he why haven't we signed the good number three is beyond me. Um so yeah, he, he felt that Archer um struggled a lot there. Um I think they're kind of generally a gist of it. You know, people are talking about how we can build on it, the lots of talent, the the experience, um, and I think that's really important. Um, there definitely are some issues that we'll speak about later on in relation to like the front row and stuff like that. Um, but it's very difficult to, you know, talk about front row when, you know, Toulouse are bringing off someone like Mavaka. Like, you know what I mean? It's it's night and day really, isn't it? Yeah, it's so much depth there. I just want to read one out from Mark Robson. Um, from a neutral perspective, Robbo and myself have commentated on many Munster games over the years, Ireland games, Irish tours, uh, we've been all over together and I do value his opinion. This, I value everybody else's, but I don't know some of the tweeters, the Munster fans who are tweeting, but it was a really interesting one that Robbo sent. Irish pain, Ulster without silver for 16 years, lose to, to lose by one point. Munster without silverware for 11 years, lose on penalties. What is it tactically, emotionally and physically that gets a recent regular winner of trophies like Toulouse across the line and matches the side by micros. Um, I, I might try and answer that first and then you can give your opinion on it. Um, I think it's international quality is one of the things. Uh, uh, being very, very mentally strong and having experiences of, of being in a, um, you know, a, t- a team that there's an expectation to win all the time in Toulouse. You know, they've, they've, been incredible. Um, they've won the competition five times the most than anyone. They've won the French Championship so many times. And their standards are very high. So they don't panic because there's a confidence within their team when they're under pressure that, OK, stay calm. We'll come up with a piece of brilliance here. And they did that on Saturday. And they did it against Ulster. They were on the ropes in Ulster in, in, in the game in Toulouse. Man sent off. And that last try that that Intermax scores to make it 26-20, that gives them the lifetime. So they create life lifelines for themselves, even when they're under pressure, because I think they back their quality. So it's it's mental strength as well. And the point on one of your tweeters there a minute ago, Neve, about the younger players benefiting from this experience, you learn from that. You know, we went on a journey and in, in from probably 97, 98 onwards, where you know, you get to a final in 2000, we lose to Northampton and you kind of learn from the pain. You've got to try and find positives in the negative, if that makes sense. And, you know, make better decisions the next time you're in that situation. So Toulouse are making those good decisions, even when they're under pressure. Uh, obviously a very good coach in Hugo Mola and their mental strength. So I think to answer Robbo's question, it's down to their psychology, their expectation and their quality. So not not panicking. We know from from sport and all in all sports that when when you take a hammer blow, that's the time to kind of double down, do the basics well, don't back up another mistake with a mistake again. And Toulouse don't do that, you know. So they're they are vulnerable. And I think, you know, Munster, and, and again, we'll talk about it in a minute when we go into the game tactically, the, you know. They made them vulnerable at times and didn't always exploit it. So the younger players will definitely benefit from that. But it's a really good point, you know, that mental yeah. strength. But they're I, coming up against a team on Saturday at Leinster who have that in loads of that, that mental yeah. resilience, that drive. So it's about creating that as well as a team. Yeah, absolutely. And look, when you're used to winning, it's it it you're 100% right. It drives across different confidence. You look at only the weekend, Limerick and Tip and, you know, um, Limerick not playing great and uh, and all of a sudden having that extra finding that extra gear to be able to go in the last ten minutes. You look at United in the nineties and, and early two thousands. Same time thing they used to call it Fergie time. That ability to keep going when things aren't going their way. And so to be fair to Toulouse, I think they were always they were always Munch just couldn't get away enough. And I think a big you know a big moment. So if we finish with the tweets now and look at the game, a, a big moment for that game for me wasn't really much about the kicks or stuff that we'd missed. Um, I don't know if you remember, Jason Jenkins gets a turnover and Munster go and play quick and Casey picks the ball up and there's the Toulouse player running offside um, and he just double pumps before he passes it. He throws that straight into the Toulouse player and that's a, 
a penalty and Munster go 13 points up. Those kind of small things, I think that's flipped around on the reverse. I think Toulouse will do that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so I do, it's, yeah. it's 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 that kind of ability to. But that comes with experience, Neil. That comes with experience, 100%. and you know they're yeah, top yeah. class internationals. You know, it's it's um it's when you've 21 internationals and you're 23 yeah. uh, top quality players, um and Fusak, the centre is, is a very young player but a very exciting player. And Delibes, the winger, phenomenal yeah. player as well. Okay, let's move on. Um, forty thousand fans, question marks leading up to this about the Ed Sheeran concert. One or two tweets I saw or people online talking about, you know, if the game was in Thoman Park, that uh, would have been different. This was a home game. The fans yeah. were phenomenal. There was probably 15,000 more Monster fans that would have been in Thoman Park. So I don't think that's an issue. So we can put that one to bed. Just the, the occasion. We touched on it briefly in some of the tweets. It was just special. It was really special. I know you don't want kind of moral victories and say that... Um, you know, it was a great colour, it was great singing and all that, and, and we're gallant losers. I think nobody wants that, and, and I'd be angry if people were kind of focusing on that, saying, well, we're, 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 we're kind of getting used to losing and stuff like that. This has to be a galvanising point for Munster Rugby, for the fans, uh, connection with the team, and I think they did. People left the stadium heartbroken on Saturday, but there was some sort of a different feeling there that there's something to build on here. And I just think the whole occasion was, was, it was just crazy. And I'm sure it came across like that in the TV to you. Yeah, it was incredible. I think watching it here, you almost got like a lump in your throat with the emotion of it all, especially as, as you say, when you could just hear zombie reverberating around the, the stadium at half time of extra time. It was just, it looked incredible. I think, um, you know, I kind of felt like we were going to be on it, like in terms of I was like, oh my god, we're 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 going to win this from from the moment Peter O'Mahony came out of the tunnel. I just think the 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 noise, the flags, the place erupted when Munster came onto the pitch, and you just kind of felt like, God, if you're a player, like you you're going to feed off this, you're going to burn off this, like it's just going to be like you know, and I and I think I think that's what it showed. I think Munster yeah. were ferocious in their. Well, their work rate for Yeah, so in, like I touched on, they showed passion, pride, work rate, energy, uh, a real desire. So that's kind of a template that needs to be enhanced, um, garnered, if you like, going forward. So for this I think though we have to here, give kudos to the branch in terms of the ticketing, the buses. Yeah, the ticket pricing and all um, that. I think it was incredible. And, and, and you see the, the benefit of that. You know, Munster, you know, home game in Thorne Park that holds 26,000. Um, you, you, you market something very well and you almost like a call for arms and you get 40 odd thousand in a match. It was just, it was incredible. I was so jealous sitting at home. I was raging that yeah. I wasn't in Dublin. Um, so, okay, so the, the occasion was incredible, but we have to take the emotion out of this. Munster are not in the semi finals of the European Cup to play Leinster next Saturday. They're out. Heartbreaking way to lose. Um, but there's positives and negatives in this performance, and we want to try and look at them. Um, for you, what are the positives of, of what happened on Saturday from a, from a playing point of view? Oh, I, I thought there was a huge amount. I thought they were exceptional how they tried to move the ball um, to the edges, something that we hadn't seen a huge amount. We've probably seen a little bit more over the last two weekends, but I just thought they tried to play. Um, I thought their defence was exceptional. I thought the back row were the three best players in the pitch. Um, I think that they were just ferocious in everything that they did. I thought they were really clever. Um, and, you know, we, we spoke going into the match about, you know, different players getting selected over others. For example, the Conor Murray, Craig Casey debate. I thought in the first half, Conor Murray defending on that edge where he had a 4v1, 4v2 and almost conceded ground to make the tackle was just, for me, I just, was like, that's why he's in there. He was just, um, I thought he was really, really good. Um, so I, I, I do, I think there was there was a huge amount of positives to picture that. Um, I just loved the ambition that they went and tried to play. I think that they, they tried to match Toulouse and everything that they, they did and look, Toulouse are exceptional. God, the, some, the couple of tries that they scored were 
were really, really good. Um, and they had to be really, really good to break this monster team down. Um, and look, we speak a lot about, um, you know, the, the, the non-negotiables for monster players, the the passion, the ability to to work very hard. Um, and we saw that in spades. I just think now, you know, the last couple of weeks and last weekend in particular, we've just seen another level in terms of their ability on the ball, their running angles, their clearing the, the breakdown, um, allowing the ball to be quick um, and the difference that makes to them as, as, as a team. So it's just, I thought it was so many good points. It's trying to, trying to build on that yeah. and make sure that, that those things happen and that they become an incredibly hard team to play against. I think that's what you would like. And then um, I suppose the negatives are, uh, there's plenty of them because, and we have, again, taking the emotion out of it, you know, and not being, it's very difficult in this game to be critical of Munster. I think if they analyse the game honestly themselves, they'll look at opportunities and things that went wrong. Um, and I must say this, I was very proud to be a Munster person on Saturday at that game. Um, you know, the, the, the effort level and the desire and the fight was just phenomenal against a team that have a, you know, an array of internationals. On paper, you know, this was going to be a, an incredible challenge. We spoke last week about them having to be brave. I think they were brave. That's another positive. Um, really brave in their approach. Um, and they tried to play. But I still think, if I was looking at negatives, I still think that there was some inaccuracies. Um, there was opportunities on the edges but for, from Toulouse's defence. Um, and at 24-14, um, 63 or four minutes gone, I remember thinking there was a couple of chances and times that Munster needed to just put, put the ball through the hands. Craig Casey came on, and this is not a, a... It's very difficult, and it's very easy for me standing up high thinking we shouldn't kick the ball. I thought we should have kept playing. I thought they tried to protect the lead, and we talk about experience there and that bit of nose that you need. Um, they're 10 points up after being 14-7 down at one stage in the game. Um, I just thought they tried to protect the lead and they played within themselves a little bit. They still defended incredibly manfully, but there was opportunities to keep going. And I just thought one more score, yeah, one more score, even if it's a penalty and, and they can hold on um, and, then, and then play a little different. So I thought they played within themselves. They kicked the ball too much in the end. Munster had 45 kicks in the game from hand. It's too much for me. Uh, Toulouse at 28. I know sometimes you have to kick and, and it's really important, but I thought at times you kick the ball away. It's very difficult. And again, easy for me to say, it's very difficult. You know, you, pin, you pull back some moments and you think, put it through the hands there rather than trying to put the grubber kick through. But there was, you know, 45 kicks. And I thought the kicks, a lot of the kicks were excellent and really, really good. But I just thought the kicks in the middle of the field in the second half where Craig Casey was box kicking up the middle, there wasn't a chase in either side. Yeah, but it was also, for me, the inaccurate kicks came at crucial times. So the Delande poked through when they had hands, the Casey went up. Yeah, so it was a, a, a crucial times I felt we kicked inaccurately. And to be fair, they were under so much pressure, Niamh. Mm -hmm. Toulouse were, were like hungry animals in that second half. For a 20, 25-minute yeah. period, they were just throwing everything at Monster and they were under can a lot I, of pressure. Can I tell you what I, I felt were, were my I kind of two big neg two negatives in my mind. So I was really surprised that they went with a 6-2 spin on the bench. Um, I was disappointed to be honest because I understand and you're going to tell me something different because you're a forward but from a backline perspective uh, I just felt like that you know Daly had been playing really well Conway had been training during the week uh, surely, you know, and, and, and when I saw Zebo with his calf strapped, I thought to myself, oh God, I hope he can get through this game because we didn't have any cover on the bench. It's a, um, it's a, risk, it's a risk you take. Um, yeah. To lose his power dictated that. And to be fair, I thought Jack Daly was incredible when he came on. But sometimes that can work for you, work yeah. against you. Zebo and I just felt like hobbling yeah. a little bit at the end. Yeah, um, and and second thing for me though is that you know when we so this we had this brilliant starter play where Delande is ridiculously strong and 
because Farrell is such a big runner um, and he can sit people down, um, defences will converge in on him. So for the first half, Delande runs straight. Farrell is there to rock and we play again. Second half, he looks for a tip. If you take a wide angle of that, and I'm sure you must have seen it from being high up, had you know Delande hit Carberry out the back, it's almost like a three or four v two. Um, and you talk about painting pictures for defences and this kind of game of chess. And in my mind's eye, Toulouse have been so conditioned to jump in and bite in on Delande and Farrell that there was a huge amount of space on the edges. And for me, that's the next level. That's the, the issues that we speak about that we kind of missed. Leinster wouldn't, you know, would give that pass. Toulouse would and they, give they, that pass. They can exploit that with the little wraparounds. Yeah. And I think, yeah, so a little bit predictable an attack is another negative. Again, something to work on. And we'll talk about Mike Prendergast at the end, his appointment and what he can um, build on. Um, the scrum was the big one. I think if one strike a scrum, they win that game on Saturday. Very simple. Uh, for the second second to lose try um, from from Labelle, um, Munster stop a five meter line out. Um, they all pat each other on the back and they react and there's an incredible crowd reaction. I swear to God, the first thing I'm thinking of. Is, Forget about your reaction. Just get down, get ready for the scrum because Toulouse yeah. had, had kind of nearly driven Munster off the, first, the previous scrum. I think this was only the second or third scrum of the game. Um, and then Toulouse kind of drove him off the ball, turned it over. There was a penalty coming, possibly someone going in the bin if Toulouse went back for the penalty because I, I'd say he would have taken another scrum. Labelle scores in the corner. The, 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 the match-winning or the, the, the kick from uh, from Ramos to level the game on 74 minutes. Munster had a scrum on their 22 after another great bit of work. John Ryan, I think, knocks the knocks the hand of of yeah. um, Cyril by the loose head prop that came on, and they knock it on. Incredible reaction from the crowd again. And I thought, this is it. But then I'm thinking straight away, you've got to get this scrum right. Just get it in, get it out. Um, penalty given against Munster again. Ramos kicks the the, the points. Um, there's no quick fix solution here. We're not going to stay in this long. And everybody knows this. It's a very obvious one. And we don't want to be highlighting Stephen Archer and John Ryan and Josh Richerley is still very inexperienced as well. And he had an incredible game around the field. Um, and again, we talk about the international quality and the depth that Toulouse had. Uh, to be able to bring Cyril Boy on, David Anu, and Pete Peto Mauvaka, three international players come on. Um, whereas you know you've Dermot Barron, Jeremy Lockman, and John Ryan come on for for, for Munster. Um, John Ryan is international. Uh, Archer is an international. Scandal is, but there's a difference in the in the number of caps and what the, the the power of the other players. What what's the solution here? Is it get better technically or go to the market and sign sign players? We have Kenya Knox coming through and Roman Salanoa. Their progress hasn't been as quick as everyone would like. John Ryan is leaving at the end yeah. of the year. Um, so where do wants to go from here? Or can, you know, will this yeah, resurrect itself again next year if it's the same kind of people that are there or will they get better? Yeah, look, I definitely do think that they're going to have to go to the market, I think, really, the, in terms of if John Ryan is going. Um, you're right, Kenya Knox is still coming through. Sal Noah is injured again, um, from what I hear. Uh, he was one of the mother at the A game on Friday that I went to watch. So, um yeah, look, I just think that, um, you know, in mind's eye and hindsight's a wonderful thing, but, you know, Killer getting injured and, and you know, John Cronin's um, contract not being renewed. And, um, James Cronin, yeah. Sorry, James Cronin, sorry. And you're, you're expecting a huge amount from Josh Witchley. I thought he was brilliant. I thought he was absolutely he was. incredible. Um, but it's not it's it's not him. It's what's coming after us. I think that we don't have a huge amount of strength and depth, and that's just the long and the short of it. Just a quick question there, because I know absolutely nothing about the scrum. You know, you're under pressure there. I I felt in my mind's eye, looking at it, that we just needed to hit, get it, get ball goes in, and it's gone straight away. I felt like we kind of were we we didn't have the kind of cleverness or the just to reach and go did we no Am I... a, a clean strike down channel one yeah sometimes it works but to lose always... just yeah okay it doesn't always bit, happen bit where naive you get, of me. Where, no it's not it's not it sometimes happens if you get that the timing right from scrum half hooker to strike straight down channel one 
um, and and the number eight can get it away really quickly. I think look, it's 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 hard to get that right. Um, I just think Munster just came up against absolute beasts. Um, Marshawn in the middle, the hooker was just the power and strength that was coming through, and Niall Scandal was really difficult. So look, we don't have a solution for the scrum. Maybe Munster will 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 um, will go to the market and bring someone in. Um, Maybe Kenyon Knox and Roman Salanoel coming through. That would be the hope for Graham Roundtree. I watched Kenyon Knox, I think, Cardiff. I thought he was brilliant. Size, yeah, sheer diff- size. There's a, diff- and there's a different no, level I know, step up No, here. I know, but I'm saying is that, like, he's the, the sheer size of him. You're, you're thinking if you can just get it, keep him fit. Yeah, and he, it takes you know I mean? time. It takes time. Take time. He's so very young there's, still. There's, there's a hope that that can happen yeah. because I think it's difficult to go out um, budget-wise and all that. Just one other thing. Um, they also don't grow on trees, by the way. They don't, no. And lots of teams struggle with them. Munster, even though their defence was phenomenal, they had 38 missed tackles. It just tells you how, how good Toulouse are and how much pressure Munster were under, particularly in that second half. Like the effort level, Munster had, they won 15 turnovers. Yeah, it's a massive, incredible. massive number. Um, it was just, it was just an incredible effort. So, we're not focusing on all the negatives here. We're just talking about reality. Munster is still deficient in certain areas, namely the front row. Um, some more depth right across the board. Every team would want more younger players coming through. The positives here around player player development and what we've seen, I think Alex Candelan was has been sensational for Munster. And I think he's a real, real shout for New Zealand tour and should be in the conversations. I think he should go. I think Jack O'Donoghue who's been absolutely brilliant as well. Um, do you bring? Do, do you think? Do you think? Do you, is there room for the two of them on the? On I don't the know if they bring the two of them, but I think both of them deserve, are deserving to be in the conversation. I think Alex Kendall and is obviously the future. Jack is kind of in the middle part of his career yeah. where he had been capped. Uh, but what a season he's having. Peter O'Mahony, um, I think, you know, he was he was just exceptional again and, and shows that he's not going away. Uh, Finian Witchley probably had his best game. I think he was he was everywhere. They all played well. Like, there's no yeah. player you could say had a bad game. I think the scrum, obviously, was the issue. I just, I, I also think we had, were a little bit naive as well in terms of some of the younger players. You know, crucial times, obviously, look, Tom Mahoney is going to be playing run for rugby for Munster in Ireland for the next 15 years. So I've no doubt about it in my mind. I think he's exceptional. Um, that, that's stealing the line out. But the, the penalty at a crucial time when we kick off, I've just we've conceded, you know, it's an easy out for Toulouse. Craig Casey getting caught on the side of a scrum when the scrum is going backwards. Like, they're just easy outs for Toulouse. And that's, again, learning experience. Learning. So watch that's going to be huge for us. And how their body language and what they do differently. You know, in fairness, Munster's discipline was very good. They gave away 11 yeah. penalties. Probably three or four of those penalties were, were at scrum time. Toulouse gave away 12. But the stats show that Toulouse had more possession, more territory, more metres gained, more carries, 38 defenders beat into Munster 16. Nine clean line breaks, Munster at two. And that's just yeah, how good they are. 21 and we, off yeah, we, And we feel, you know, incredibly hard done by that we didn't win. Like, Munster feel that's, hard done by it. Yeah, it just goes to show, show. So we're trying to focus on the positives here, that if they can get some of these intricate things better, well, then you would be yeah. confident that um, the Huge. players the players can, can, get, yeah. can get more out of the performances and stuff. Just before we move away, and uh, we we don't we're not going to look too far, far forward to 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 uh, to Leinster. Just the Ben Healy missed penalties. Um, okay, he could have been the hero. It was could have been right or over stuff. The penalty right at the end of the game from fifty seven meters. It was always going to be hard, difficult kick. Nearly got there. He missed that. Drop goal. Scuppered one in extra time, and then the one right at the end. I was convinced it was over. He caught it from a from a, a striking point of view perfectly, but it was off target. Everyone in the crowd thought it was over. Could have been the hero. That close to being an incredible hero and probably remembered ever forever for Munster. And then he misses the two kicks and Connor Murray seen Connor Murray missed the kick as well in the in the shootout. Um I just think I feel sorry for him. I felt heartbroken for him personally. Um I just think back of Rog missing those two kicks and he won't mind me saying it. Peter Claus, he always reminds him. 
uh, <laughs> over over that one in 2000. Uh, that Cla- Claw didn't get a European Cup medal because of Rod. She blames Rod. <laughs> Rod was a relatively young player then and missed those two kicks against Northampton and Twickenham. Incredibly difficult kicks. But you just see the mental strength and the career Rod had. The drop goal, winning a Grand Slam, the drop goal in the Northampton Munster game in Tolman Park. Penalty over in Leicester, I remember, from inside the halfway line for us to win a European game there. Kicks in France, all, all over the place. Um, and I suppose kick, kickers have to go through this. It's a heartbreaking way to go out. But I think if someone like Rog can, like Ben Healy, and I'm sure he'd be conscious of what, what happens. And it happens to kickers. It's like penalty takers in soccer, isn't it? They remember for the miss. Um, so I felt really hard. I hope he responds from that, and I hope the monster. I'm sure all the monster fans understand that. And it's yeah. I, I remember Ronaldo saying a few years ago when Portugal were had penalties in some shootout, and I think the European Championships it could have been was it the final? I can't remember exactly which game it was. And he just said to one of his teammates, "Look, who was really nervous? He brought him up off the sideline. Go and take a penalty. It's in God's hands now." And the, those penalties the other day were in kind of. That's the way it it, it happens. Um, so I hope he responds, and uh, and uh, I think he will. He's he's this. got he's got a good steeliness about him. Um, yeah. and can, the re- bit- can the rest of the team pick themselves up as well? Yeah, of course they can. Of course they can. They look. You talked. You spoke about there about separating the emotion from the process. When they have a few days off and they come back together, and um, they'll 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 realize very quickly they have a huge amount to, to be proud of, and and no. More importantly, that they're going in the right direction. And if that's the case, then it's very easy to buy in. Yeah, so they've got Leinster on Saturday week. Um, a must-win game if they want to secure a home quarter-final because, uh, you know, when you look at the table, uh, a home quarter-final, home semi-final possibly if they finish in the top two. The Sharks, the Stormers, Ulster, Bulls, um, they can all kind of squeeze Munster out if they win their games. Um, so it's a must-win game. And I think, look, they'll be... You know, when they peel it back, the emotion, I think they will be pretty proud of what they've done. Just finally, um, we could keep going on about the match. I think in in summary, um, incredible occasion. I think a, a, a kind of a line in the sand moment for Munster Rugby as regards a taster of, of, of what can possibly be. Um, the love and affiliation for the, the, the European Cup. Um, the journey for the fans, a lot of new fans, we say, as you said, young kids going to the match might start the journey and become diehard monster fans. And I just think the whole colour and occasion was phenomenal. Ultimately, Monster lost the game in heartbreaking circumstances that probably, it's hard to say should have won, but could have won. And it was right there in front of them. And they had control, but lost control. So lots of positives. We did speak yeah. about the negatives and we have to do that. And everybody knows about those negatives. Just one big positive last week, I think, and we've spoken about it for a while. And just briefly, Mike Prendergast is, 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 uh, was appointed um, attack coach. It was the best kept, kept secret for a number of weeks. Um, the coach I am ridiculously so excited about this coaching appointment. Like, so excited. Like, I just think... Mike Prendergast was doing skills with us in 10 acres field when there was four or five Irish players not based in Dublin. He would come out and help us. And even then, he just blew me away with his ability to make you better very quickly. Um, and obviously, like, you know, four or five girls out in the 10 acres in UL is much different to, to heading off. But he's plied his trade from Brody Duh into Racing. Um, and... Yeah, look, when he got appointed last week, loads of people were talking about, oh, well, he won't have these mercurial players like Teddy Thomas and Finn Russell. And like, obviously, it was ridiculous tries to begin. But it's not that. It's 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 the players that he's brought through in wrestling that would not, you know, are now French internationals. Um, so, yeah, look, I'm so excited to see how he can bring in what he can bring to the table um, and his ability to use um, for players to be playmakers across the park. That's his, He's so, so good at that. Um yeah, so I thought it was a really, I think it's really astute um, signing from from Munster. Yeah, it's a brilliant signing, I think, and um, there's st- definitely a template and and areas we spoke about that can hopefully he can improve the squad and and bring through more younger players. Um, still waiting on other appointments. Uh, Dennis Leamy is still being mentioned and linked, so I don't know where that's at. Um, but the coaching team, at least, it's it's starting to build a little bit now, and they can 
they can look forward to, to the next the, the next season, really. The end of this season, but certainly next season and a, a new start, new beginning. Johan van Grand's emotion on Saturday, I felt really felt for him. I think he's taken a fair bit of flack in the last few months. Some of it justified, some of it a little bit over the top. Um, ultimately, when you're the head coach, you've got to take responsibility for you know, the frustrations of the fans if the team is not going well. But to be fair, and Stephen Larkham as well, they've they've turned a bit of a corner. And I think lots of people I've met along the way and spoken to in the last few weeks, um, they're, they're certainly easier on the eye and they give it everything on Saturday. So they deserve a lot of credit as well. Um, yeah. You know, Toulouse brought on seven international players on Saturday. I know I keep saying that point, but top-class internationals against younger, inexperienced players who are not playing international rugby on a regular base, it does make a difference. So um, I think to Leinster would beat him on Saturday. Um, I'm not trying to give any to lose any sort of uh, motivation against Leinster, but I just think Leinster, 20 minutes, 25 minutes over in Leicester, job done. Incredible. They're really efficient. Um, there's a resilience about them. Toulouse will test their power, test them with their power and their physicality. Um, but that should be a cracker on Saturday. I think Leinster will get through. So that's it for episode 31 of the Red 78. Uh, to make sure you get your podcast straight to your phone every week, just search the Red 78 wherever you get your podcast and press subscribe. Don't forget to get in touch with us. You can tweet us any observations or thoughts after the podcast. Looking ahead next week to Leinster, which will we'll try and uh, make a big build up. Uh, hopefully Leinster won't put out a full strength side. Um, they might be looking forward to a European Cup final the week after and they can't be caught now. So uh, you can tweet us at Rugby Channel 15 or search the Rugby Channel on YouTube and leave a comment. And uh, anyway, we're just about getting over the heartbreak. So that's it for, ne- for this week. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Neve. Thanks, Cody. The Monster Rugby Podcast. Red 78 with Adam Quinlan and Neve Briggs. Nobody knows Monster Rugby better.